Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana channel, my name is Shanks and today we are going to cast a replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06 but before we gonna jump into the video I wanna remind you that we have also a second YouTube channel which is called BFME World and it includes all the uploads from our Twitch live streams that of course includes BFME 2 and the Rise of the Wish King tournaments as well. It will be linked in the description down below, please do me a favor, check it out and also subscribe if you haven't already. Before further ado, let's get the game started, shall we? Alright, we are once again on the beautiful map Forts of Eisen, of course. That's the most played 1v1 map in Battle for Middle Earth games, generally. And on the right side, we have the yellow model player, Unicorn. And he's facing against the red counter player, Kono. It's a El Clasico matchup, as you guys know. Good against evil, just like in the films. I like that a lot. Mordor is starting with the Orc Pit. And of course, recruiting the Golem as well. The first orc is gonna be used to grab the settlement right here and he's now moving on to the second settlement with the golem because golem is quite mobile and he will be reaching this side a bit faster. And in this matchup for Mordor it's very important to play passively in the first couple of minutes into the game because Mordor's early game is not the greatest and you need to have some time to scale into the mid to late game in which you can shine bright like a diamond. But until then it's all about being careful and Gondor on the other side has to pressure, he has to try to destroy as many lumber mills as possible early game and the first Gondor Knight from the stable later on has to be used to deal economical damage to the Mordor player, otherwise if you give Mordor too much time you will get outscaled quite hard into, in the lead game. With 3 flying heroes, with trolls and massive leadership, Mordor is gonna be invincible and nobody can face it against that in long terms. So orcs are for free, but they are also the weakest infantry unit in the game by far. I'm assuming they are also a bit stronger actually than peasants when they are not drafted. I'm not sure though, they might also be equally as strong, but Mordor has the Eye of Sauron, which will be used now. And smart move from the Gondor play, I like this a lot, because he was sending his hobbit with the soldiers, while the second soldier was grabbing the farm at the bottom left side of the map. And with the hobbit of course, he will be hitting extremely hard. And he was already using the heal on the soldiers, which are still badly damaged. But you see the micro, he's always microing away with the soldiers and trying to deal some damage with the hobbit in the meantime. And one more soldier will be just taken down in long terms. I mean, more and more orcs are gonna enter the battlefield eventually. And keep in mind that the heal from the spellbook of Gondor is already on cooldown. And when you are not able to, lead, to deal you know, economical damage with that, I mean not being able to destroy the Lumber Mill, that's fine. In those kind of situations, what you can try to do is kill as many workers from the Lumber Mill as possible. Gollum is doing a phenomenal job defending and Hobbit is gonna just micro around. That's all you can do with Gondor. Gondor is not the best early game into the game because unlike all the other factions like Isengard, Rohan and, and, and or Mordor, you have not access to more units at the beginning of the game. Rohan, for example, can use the farms to recruit some more peasants. Mordor is starting with the Orc Pit and Isengard is going to start always with the Uruk Pit. So your early game after your soldiers are dead is always with the Hobbit Pedigree and Took until you will be able to get some Gondor Knights on the field from the, sta from the stable, which is going to be the case right now. We are warriors of the Shire. And he's also going to revive his Hobbit who is almost level 2 by the way, more levels mean more DPS, more tankiness. And Mordor, after not losing any of these Lumber Mills, look his base. He has almost a full base already. Now he has a couple of options, and I like the option with the Haradrim Palace. Why? Because that's gonna give you the chance to fight actively for the map control, and you don't have to camp it out. With the Trolls, it's gonna be kinda tricky, because the second Gandalf the White is gonna join the battlefield, and trust me, he will join the battlefield eventually. Your Trolls, they will be doomed. So you will be forced to play only inside your own castle, defend yourself. That's a very passive gameplay from Mordor. While Easterlings, for example, from the Haradrim Palace level 2, they are also called Soldiers of Rune in Battle for Middle of 1, are going to give you the chance to fight actively for the map control, as they are acting like a pikeman from Isengard, for example. And with the Haradrims, you can recruit from the Haradrim Palace, you can actually also try to capture those outposts at the bottom left and top right side and place those Haradrims inside the outpost for some pro protection and again, it's gonna give you more map control. If you don't do that, you will always keep losing those mills left and right and Gondor will just grow rich. And remember what I was saying at the beginning of the game, it's very important for the Gondor player with the first Gondor Knight coming from the stable to destroy all these mills as soon as possible. Troll Kitch is building up, 
The first troll is on his way. And the troll is, of course, a great counter to the Gondonites, but also very squishy against Gandalf, for example. One Easter Elite from Gandalf is able to one-shot the troll in no time, unless you have enough leadership with the Drama Troll early on and Witch King in Darkness later on. The creep is going to be secured by Gondor. Very well done. Uh, he will also get the money, but he needs to be careful. The Wargs are hungry. They will get in safety. Oh, that was really close, actually. And he's now going to the well to recover our time. Not a full base yet. In this matchup, it's always nice when you get a third Gondonite on the field as soon as possible. Because this way, you can always keep one of them fighting for the uh, creeps. And two of them are actually trying to pressure Mordor all the time. And also, the third Gondonite is going to give you the chance to get your stable to level 2. Which will unlock the Night Shields. And Night Shields are very efficient when it comes to rush the evil base. Because he has a bunch of towers and Night Shield is in, you know, increasing your durability against arrows especially. So, of course, like... Uh, predicted Gondor is gonna have the map control until some more trolls are gonna join the battlefield. This troll is trying to creep the Warkling at the right side of the river. They have still the troll at the top left side and also at the left side of the river remaining on the field as well as at the bottom left side. The third Gondonite is now on the field and now Gondor might go for the Night Shields and that's gonna be actually his plan. So he's planning to go for a, for a base rush and that's gonna force Mordor to at least keep one or two trolls inside his own base. Losing the troll cage is the worst case scenario. You don't want that to happen because if this happens before you get a drama troll on the field, that's gonna cost you so much time. Because in order to get your troll cage to level two, as Mordor in Battle for Middle Earth One, you need to recruit four trolls first. So the dream for the Gondor player would be to destroy the troll cage just before the drama troll joins the battlefield and force the Mordor player, uh, force the Mordor player to actually recruit four more trolls before he ever gets the chance. And be careful with the troll. Paramir could be also a nice choice, by the way, in this kind of situations. But I'm assuming he also cancelled the Night Shields. It looks like he want to save for the Gandalf Divide as soon as possible. We have 4,000 nearly resources collected for the Gonza player. 6,000 is needed for the Gandalf, the Great, to join the battlefield. And the second he joins, you can invest up two power points from the Spellbook of Gondor to turn him into the Gandalf Divide. The Mifrandia, as elves would like to call him. Troll is doing a nice job defending, but again... This is going to be a different situation once Gandalf is able to enter the battlefield. That's a very solid strategy from Gondor. When you see troll start from the Mordor player, you can always try to rush Gandalf. And Gandalf is going to make sure that you have the full map under your control. And once again, like mentioned many, many times, trolls are going to be forced to stay home. They are not able to walk outside anymore freely. Because Gandalf is just going to one-shot them with the Eastery Light and Lightning Sword in no time. Troll Kitch is level 2 now. But look at the money from the Gonzo player, do you see that? Gandalf Divide is going to be unlocked now, which means 300 more health for Gandalf, 100% damage from Gandalf's powers, and powers recharge twice as quickly. So a huge boost for Gandalf, actually, from Grey to White. And without White, Gandalf is kind of useless. Not only he's not able to deal damage, but also he has long cooldowns on his abilities, and he's not even able to get mounted on his Shadow Fags until he's level, uh, until he's Gandalf Divide. So Gondor is still doing a nice job, you know, harassing all the time. Of course, Gondor Knights are faster than those trolls. So they can hit and run, kite pretty much. And now he's also going for the Night Shields. Of course, that's not going to be enough. You also need the Forge Blades. So the best combination is Gandalf with Night Shields and Forge Blades for the Gondor Knights. Then you can make something happen. Because Gandalf also gives you armor leadership. Which can stack with the Night Shield, for example. And your Gondor Knights are going to be quite tough and quite tanky at the same time. Which means you can tank those towers for ages. The outpost has been captured because at some point of this game, Gondor will of course need some archers too. Ideally, you want to recruit some rangers. Rangers having the highest DPS from all the archers in Battle for Middle-earth games. But they are also the squishiest because they have not the chance. You see what I mean? The troll has been one-shotted from the Easter Elite. Uh, and yeah, you have no chance with the rangers to buy heavy armor on them. That's not possible. Only banner and fire. Now he's going inside the jeans. But Mordor is ready to defend himself. With the drama troll being around, the trolls will be 50% tankier. So it's gonna take a little bit longer time for the guns off to actually kill them. Lightning Sword is going to be missed. One slaughterhouse is potentially gonna be taken down, yes, but now Gondor has to disengage. When Gandalf has powers on cooldown, with that I mean primarily the Easter Light and the Lightning Sword, then you can't make anything happen against those trolls anymore. Zaplas is going to be potentially able to knock them down on the ground, but not damage them, especially not when there is a drama troll nearby. 
It's the mission of... Go you see? Boom. <laughs> they don't get one shot anymore. Do you see that? Because the Gandalf, of course. Uh, because the Drama Troll, of course. But uh, look. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, he missed. And when Gandalf gets hit by the trolls, he will be activating passively. That's nothing you can control, by the way. His uh, shield bubble, which is like a huge damage reduction on Gandalf. I believe that's gonna give you like 90% damage reduction, so you can actually tank a lot. But it's only active for like 2 seconds, so you need to be extremely careful. The problem with Gandalf is, after using a ability like a Easter Light or a Lightning Sword, you cannot move for like a second or two after using that. You are like CC'd, you know what I'm saying? Crowd controlled yourself. And this is gonna be enough time for the trolls to actually one-shot your Gandalf. Gandalf is not the tankiest hero in the game. He's not Aragorn, of course. But the pressure is real. Mordor was actually able to fight for the map control in the meantime. He was able to get this mill under this control, this mill at the top right side. So he is getting some money. Let me take a look into his money. Industry is going to give him a huge boost too. And now the goal from Mordor is going to be to save for the Witch King of Engma. Why is this so important, you are asking? Glad you are asking. I mean, I'm going to answer your question. Witch King grants you the same armor and damage leadership like a drama troll does. And remember, in Battle for Middle Earth 1, the leadership is able to stack with each other. With that being said, your trolls are going to be twice as tanky and twice as strong. So 100% damage and 100% armor for the trolls makes them very, very beefy. And they can just tank those easter lights and lightning swords like a boss. And that's not even the end goal yet that's not even the end game yet because mordor is also the you know the powerpoint uh seat darkness from the spell book and it means even more damage and more armor for these trolls but um the power spike for gondo is going to be when he has the eagle summon unlocked from his spell book for that reason he has to first of all go for the alvin alliance you cannot go for the eagles after the gandalf divide the only possible way for you to uh, get to the seven is actually See it, uh, Cloud Break. Cloud Break is the only possible way, and that's also the fastest way for Gondor to actually get to the army of the dead summon. And the troll is gonna be taken down because Easter Light is also knocking him down on the ground. Now you can commit on him, and that's the third troll Mordor is losing. He has only four trolls inside the base with one single drama troll. He's desperately trying to save for the Witch King, which costs 8,000 resources. And Gondor, of course, is trying to finish this game before this is gonna happen. They have plenty of archers now going for an attack. I see five archer units, a couple of them with um, heavy armor, but every single one of them with fire arrows. Fire arrow means more damage output. Gandalf hits level 6. That's one of the few matchups in which the war of power from Gandalf is not going to be as impactful as, for example, against Isengard or Rohan, because trolls, they don't receive too much damage when they have this much leadership from the war of power, you know? But of course, it's going to be nice eventually later on to kill some archers. Mordor will need archers or combos in order to be able to deal with the eagle summon later on. He has almost the power points he needs also for the elven allies, which means even more DPS for the army. The pressure is real, but the witch king is finally on his way. Just take a look into the minimap in the meantime, guys. The map is red beside this one single spot at the top left side, close to the Gondor main base. So Gondor has no money problems. What I would like to do in a situation like that as Gondor, I would like to build a marketplace. Because you cannot have any, uh, you know, you can just not have enough resources. Because you will keep, unit, you know, keep investing money into more and more units all the time. And also into upgrading the units you are recruiting all the time. So you will eventually not have enough money. And Marketplace is going to make sure that you are getting 40% more resources from the farms outside. Which is a huge amount, by the way, when you have this much map control. Like the Gondor player does right now. Witch King is on the field. Now the trolls are shining bright like a diamond. I like the positioning a lot from the archers. He's making sure to split them. But the trolls are charging in. The drama troll is not able to follow up. And lightning sword is going to be used. And of course, the trolls are now taking a lot of damage. Drama troll was not nearby yet. Witch King is getting an attack. But yeah, he should be fine. Easter light is available. You need to kill the drama troll in a situation like that. I would just focus down the drama troll and not try to kill the trolls actually. Boom. Troll is hitting like a truck. One single troll, but trust me, he's a one-man army. Drama troll is getting knocked back. One troll, you see that? Boom, level 6. Easter light is not going to be able to finish him off, of course. He might use the Easter light on this uh, troll, but he needs to be careful. You don't want to be in the melee range against this troll. Look at this, man. Look at this tankiness from this troll, too, at the same time. Gandalf is getting bullied. Heal is going to be used from the Gondor player. The troll level 7 is going to be finally taken down with the Visa Blast of Gandalf. Yes, Gondor will be able to win this fight, but it's okay. 
Mordor was able to get, collect so many power points during this battle. Now he has darkness available for the next big fight. He was able to save the Witch King, which is very important. And also the Drummer Troll has to be saved. And what I like to do in a situation like that is get a second Drummer Troll on the field. Why? Because the Drummer Trolls are able to give leadership to each other. Now, it is not about the damage leadership you are receiving. Because Drummer Trolls are not fighters. They are sporters, you know. But they will become 50% tanky this way. Which is going to make it harder for the Gonzo player to take them down. So Darkness gives you 50 armor as well. So just count for a single second. So Trolls now with Darkness, Drummer Troll and the Witch King are going to have 150% increased armor. And they will be dealing 133% increased damage. The Darkness lasts for 3 full minutes. And yeah, Witch King is not nearby. Witch King was flying around actually, trying to deal some damage to the outpost at the bottom left side. Witch King has to be always with the trolls when this happens. Because without Witch King leadership, the trolls are gonna die eventually to Ganda of the Rain. Yes, he's all about hit level 8. But once again, the War of Power is not as, you know, efficient in this matchup as it is in any other matchup against Rohan, Isengard, or even Gondor. Gondor, in the meantime, has collected nearly two power points. Oh! He was able to hit. The troll and the troll with the full charge lightning sword of course it's gonna be taken down lightning sword is one of the strongest single target abilities in the game if you hit one single target with the, with the lightning sword it deals massive amount of damage two power points collected now far away from the eagle summon eagle is the breakpoint like but you can see and tell gondor has the momentum and that's what i was saying at the beginning of the game as mordor i would like to go for the haradrim palace because you can see yourself that's a perfect proof mordor is in a, in a prison in jail pretty much all game long since Gandalf came on the field and that's gonna eventually happen and you need to kind of predict that you need to kind of play a bit more you know actively on the on the map like playing passively like that is not gonna win you the game because map control is everything in battle for middle earth games so the map you know even if for example the Mordor gets lucky that the Balrog summon unlock from the spellbook and he manages to destroy the full castle of Gondor with this many farms outside he will be just able to buy the space back in no time Industry has been used, lots of pressure. We have only th three trolls with two Rama trolls. This is gonna be enough. Now we will see the true power of Mordor, guys. Darkness. The charge in is coming in clutch. Gondor. Mustard. You have also trebuchets on the field. They always hit like a truck. And the thing about the trebuchets is that they are also able to knock down the trolls on the ground. Charge in, but the drama trolls cannot charge. So you need to be always careful about such a choice. You need to make sure that drama troll is always nearby. But you see them glowing now, guys? That's a crazy amount of glowing. Do you see that? But Mordor is still not able to commit on this outpost. Trust me. Because ranges inside the outpost are going to hit like a truck. Yes, uh, not a statue around this side, which is a mistake in my opinion. You need to always make a statue. But it looks like you want to recruit some Gondor trebuchets. Nazgul is on the hand. The Witch King. Mordor has not the money, of course, he needs. Because he keeps losing trolls. And trolls are very expensive units. They cost 900 each. So, yeah. And with no map control outside, it's going to be hard. But he was able to control this outpost at the bottom left side with three furnaces. The Lammer Mill here, here, and potentially also here. He was also able to kill a full battalion of Gondor Knights just like that. Using the Witch King for map control is actually quite efficient. And imagine this game lasts a while and Mordor is even able to get two more Nazgûls on the field. Imagine how easy it would become for Mordor to actually fight for the map control because Gandalf can't be everywhere. And Rangers or Gondor Arches are not, you know, mobile enough. Witch King is, very, uh, you know, Witch King is careful, of course. Losing Witch King is means pretty much losing the game at this stage of the game. Uh, Witch King and Nazgûls, yes, they are for free when it comes to revive them. But the revive time is actually quite long. So if you lose them, you need to wait like a four or five minutes until they rejoin the battlefield, which is a long time in battle for Middle Earth One. And that's gonna give, of course, Gondor the momentum. And you can just commit knowing the fact that your Witch King, with that also, like a big part of your leadership force, is goners. More ranges are getting recruited. But Mordor is able to hold himself in the, inside the game for now. But again, he needs some Orc Archers very, very soonish. The second the Eagle Summon from the Spellbook of Condor is gonna be unlocked, these trolls, they will be, they, you know, dead in like no time. And because they have, uh, right now, beside the Witch King, there is nobody from the Mordor army that can actually target and attack those Eagles. And they will have time and they will be untouched for the majority of the time to kill those trolls one by one. Almost five power points collected. We have level nine Gondor Knight Battalion. 
Statue is coming up also for the worst case scenario. This outpost has been destroyed and Gondor once again was able to reclaim the map control fully. Indeed, there is only one single settlement left for Mordor, but it's okay. Mordor is potentially the devastation, which I would not recommend to pick. Why? Because it's going to delay your Balrog and you need to get to this pow you know, power spike of the Balrog summon as soon as possible. Now, I'm assuming in long terms, Mordor is going to be the one who unlocks the Balrog before Gondor will be able to unlock the Eagle summon. Because eventually what's going to happen is Mordor is going to kill way more units than Gondor does. Because look how much, how many units Mordor has in compared to Gondor army. He has so many Gondor knights, Gandalf, many, many rangers. And killing those trolls is not going to give you nearly as much EXP and power points as killing the ranger army and the Gondor knights army, you know? The Golem is looking around this area, scouting what's happening. And no marketplace yet. That's a shame in my opinion. Gondor could have had so much more money. His command points caps now. He is not able to recruit any more units, by the way. He's camping at the outpost with splitting the trebuchets. He's scared and he, he's right to be scared. Now, the worst choice from the Mordor would be to commit on this outpost. Trust me. And I believe the Gondor player is trying to beat him. Oh, be careful. Oh, no, he's dead. Or boom, boom, boom. Okay, he had, you see that? I can't even talk. I'm so excited. He was forced to cancel the lightning sword. Because if he doesn't, the trolls would have killed him in no time. So, yeah. Gandalf's lightning sword is on cooldown and Witch King luckily was able to survive, but the darkness was blown away from that. And now Gondor has to be just patient. Play, play it kind of carefully. Wait the three minutes. You know, so the darkness is not active anymore. Yeah. Chasing down the Gondor Knights is a mistake. Drama trolls. Always make sure to be with the trolls. Very important. Where is the Witch King at? Witch King also needs to stay close. But Gondor is just buying time. He knows I is going to be gone very soon. He knows Darkness is going to be gone very soon. And with that, Mordor army is going to lose a big chunk of damage and armor leadership. Now they will have only the Witch King and the Drama Troll. Which is still a lot, by the way. You see the Drama Trolls, they support each other. They have now more armor with Witch King being around. They have double armor. So that's the reason why the Easter Light was not that effective. Gollum is still scouting. What a game, actually. Back and forth. Can you camp it out though? Can you actually win this game by camping? And Mordor is kind of assuming that the Eagle Summon is going to be ready very soon. And he's not wrong. Three power points can be collected at this, stage, at this stage of the game in no time. One single battle might actually give you even more than three power points. The thing with the, with the Orc Arches though is they are kind of vulnerable against Gandalf. So if Gandalf gets to the backline for a Visa Plus against those combos, he can actually deal devastating amount of damage to the Mordor's backline. Three power points collected. Witch King is still trying to do something. His DPS against farms is not the greatest. Mordor, of course, doesn't have the money he needs, but he can use industry over and over again. And you see the evil economy, even though you have like zero farms outside pretty much all game long, is still good enough to keep an army uh, like this troll army alive. And also at the same time, get a Nazgul and even more combos on the field. That's quite amazing. Orc Pit has to be level two for you to get the chance to buy the fire arrows which is a huge DPS boost for the Orc Archers and Orc Combos. And Gondor is going inside the jeans one more time. And that's what I'm trying to say. These Orcs, they are kind of a food for the Gondor Knights. Trolls are charging in. The Witch King is coming as well. And yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Now you can use the second Nazgul just to fight for the map control all the time and eventually fish more and more power points. I mean, Gondor is not going to be able to win like that. But he's too scared. He's too scared to make a move because... The thing is, if you lo if you go for the attack with this army and you lose the army, then you will give Mordor the chance to actually push for the win. Like, what I'm trying to say is Mordor can just run it down into the middle and destroy. That's why this Gondor player is actually so scared of that. He's having some rangers on top of the wall with statue behind trebuchets around the wall. He's so scared that he might lose the game out of, of one push. And he's not wrong to be scared. Now the trebuchets are meaningless because he can just send in the Nazgûls or the Witch King and one-shot them in no time. This outpost has no units inside. It will be taken down eventually. And Gondor is just trying to desperately get the power points he needs for the Eagle Summon. He knows that's the biggest win condition he has. It's the only possible and viable way to actually kill those trolls. But he's wrong because now he has to face also against those Orc Archers. With this massive leadership, they will be one-shotting those Rangers and this Gandalf and the Eagles in no time, but trebuchets are hitting like a truck. 
Darkness is almost back up. I, has, I will be used eventually. Which King is taking some damage. He has to target the Gandalf. He has to target the Gandalf before. Oh my goodness. But now he's... Oh yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Witch King has been taken down. Darkness is still on cooldown. Got a great positioning here with this trebuchet. I like the way he's splitting them. But even with the Witch King being dead. Even with that. Slap, slap Gandalf. Actually, this guy is on point with his Gandalf, guys. I gotta be honest. He's playing extremely well with Gandalf. Knowing his limits. Never taking a big risk. And was just able to slay the Witch King. And again, Witch King... Reviving him is for free, but you will see yourself. It's gonna take you ages for him to get back on the field. Hobbit Peregrine took has been taken down. Now, he, it looks like he wanna commit on this outpost. Is this a right call without Witch King being alive? I don't know. From the battle, Gondor was able to get a little bit power points. He was investing one of the power points into the Elvin Wood. Uh, I'm assuming Gondor player is gonna go, try to go for a Wizard Blast on the backline. So, the way you wanna do that is you wanna... Go for a Wizard Blast just before your Wizard Blast goes off. You want to place the Alvin Wood. What it does is like it's creating a terrain which nullifies any leadership bonuses. It means those Orc Arches and combos, they're going to get one-shotted from the Gandalf's Blast of Wizard. In the meantime, the Nazgul was doing a good job defending and uh, defeating the bottom side. More trebuchets hitting like a truck. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. That's the reason why combos are not the are the worst possible units actually against oh nice hit. Are, do you see the damage dude from the trebuchet? Combos are so immobile, you know, in compared to everything else. Oh he's gonna die now. Oh that was so close. The shield bubble was saving him in the last possible second. He had also used to use the heal. The trebuchet is gonna be taken down. Trebuchet is surprisingly tanky against trolls, by the way. But he, uh, keep in mind that they lost the Witch King, which is a huge amount of DPS you are losing, you know? If Witch King would be around when the trolls are hitting Gandalf, he would be dead by now. Trust me. Or I would be active. But it was on cooldown. Industry will be used for the 10th time, I think. That's a quite long game. Mordor is only 11 power points away from getting the Balrog of Morgoth unlocked from the spellbook, which, like many, many times explained, is enough to one-shot the entire Gondor base and castle by himself. So you will deal a huge amount of damage. Oh my goodness. But you know, Easter Light is on cooldown. The Elven allies. The thing is, when you use Elves like that and you combine it with the Easter Light, all they gotta do is shoot the Nazgul a couple of times because Nazgul, in compared to the Witch King, isn't nearly as tanky and tough as the Witch King of Engmar. We have now trebuchets or catapults coming from Gondor, from Mordor, sorry. And here's the outpost, but it's gonna be taken down. Now we have lots of Gondonites. And once again, it's a ship. Oh, here's the marketplace. Finally! Finally, dude, from the Iron Ore, he's getting 20% more from the Blacksmiths. And from the um, Grand Harvest, he's getting 40% more resources from those farms inside and outside of the base. Guys, with this many farms outside being level 3, the Gondor player, trust me on that one, is not gonna be broke anytime soon. He can make army all the time, and he does that. He gets trebuchets on the field, archers, rangers, Gondonites. Upgrades them, of course. And that's only possible because of the marketplace. And the marketplace... It's just like scavenger from the from the model faction, for example. The longer the game goes on, the long the more value you will get from it. And also, the scavenger from Mordor is kind of underperforming because it's gonna slow you down. In this game, in Battle for Middle of One, you don't want to, you know, pick all the power points like Devastation, Scavenger, then call the Horde before you make it to Balrog. You wanna get to the Balrog, or to, or when you are playing the evil factions or the army of the dead when you are playing the good factions as soon as you potentially can because they are game winning uh, summons in this game you know so at any point of the game when you see army of the dead or the baldrog summon the game is gonna come into come to an end because they are just too powerful in my opinion a bit too powerful maybe too busted because it's kind of insane when you are able to kill the full castle with the baldrog all alone in my opinion you know Huge army, many, many trolls on the field, orcs, but the thing is you don't want to leave your base unprotected, you know? You always want to keep like two trolls, one drama troll, one combo, and two catapults or something like that inside your base. Because you are not as mobile as Gondor is. So you can always rotate. You can always see, okay, he's moving to a, for an attack, so I can just attack his main castle, and that's going to be also his plan. Look at that. He's going to try to get the power points he needs for the eagle summon. Very important. Gondor knights, there is only one single troll without drama troll. Cut a shot. Witch King is flying by. He might go for a Wizard Blast, by the way. Nazgul is also coming now. It's gonna be also his plan. He's trying to get the power points unlocked, but he's also losing a lot. Now the Mordor is, again, that's what I'm trying to say. He's rotating now, but it's too late. He lost the Orc Archer Battalion. 
now just keep you don't need to send like eight trolls forward at the same time you know you don't need to do that like five trolls for an attack are enough okay you see israelite is not able to one shot him gandalf is getting slapped but the shield bubble activates there is only one single troll one and a half power point or one and a quarter power point away from the eagle summon like mordor is actually doing a nice job denying him the power points he's looking for he knows uh, eagle summon i need to deny that what happened here how did they die like that was catapult shot shooting them or what i don't know i see you nice bait from the gondor player beating off the eye of sauron he knows now it's gonna be on cooldown uh, mordor is getting some more units on the field darkness has been used for this attack by the way that means right now even without the witch king nearby this troll have has like a hundred percent armor with the drama troll being nearby in 83 percent more damage lightning sword is gonna be still able to kill him though tower is gonna get melted Tower is giving a lot of exp and also power points by the way to the gondor player so please keep that in mind the witch king needs to be careful i mean i would set an ambush you know because if you don't know guys rangers they are able to get invisible around the tree so what you can do is you can place them around the forest here and maybe also here and this way you can kind of bait them in with the nazgul's because when you do that they will be invisible for the opening player until he goes really close to them you know then you can maybe make something happen so gondor mordor was able to reclaim the bottom left side but he's not going to be able to hold it for a long time so basically we have now one two three four uh, five trolls with one drama troll witch king who is low and the nazgul on the field uh, but he needs more than that and again you always want to make sure that you have enough units also inside your main castle for the worst case scenario at this point i would say what mordor needs to do and that's my personal opinion is not try to risk anything you know because you are so close to the balrog summon all you gotta do is when you summon the balrog you want to commit on the last possible last outpost from the gondor player very important so you use Balrog, then you kill the castle, but he won't be defeated since he has the outpost, right? So what you want to do is you want to destroy this outpost pretty much at the same time as you are using the Balrog to destroy his castle. Of course, it's going to require a lot of multitasking and also macro play, but I believe that's the only possible way for you to win. If you don't do that, Gondor will have enough money in long terms to be able to rebuy the fortress or the castle the second you destroy it. And that means you will be like in a loop in which you will never be able to finish him off unless you are able to fight for the map control all the time which you potentially might be forced to and for that reason maybe at the the third nazgul is not going to be a bad choice the outpost is going to be taken down it's like a tom and jerry mordor is moving on destroying it gondor is moving on destroying it again so pretty much like a rotation and it looks like you want to now go for a committing you want to commit on this outpost at the top right side this might be a major mistake we will see it's about microing those trolls you don't want to be clumped like that, though. No? You don't want to be in a group like that because the trolls, they're also very uh, vulnerable against the trebuchets. Trebuchets are just hitting like an absolute track when they have the firestone. You will see what I mean. As you have darkness, it's on cooldown. Witch King has to be nearby. So Witch King is here. Witch King, my friend, you need to get closer. Catapult fight, maybe. The mortal catapults are stronger in those kind of situations because if you don't know, the drama troll is also able to give leadership or the... <laughs> Troll actually killed his own catapult. He has only one single catapult left. And Mordor is kind of careful. But now we have the power points for the Eagle Summon. Now we are talking, boys. Now we are talking. This fight is going to be now, I'm assuming, the game changing and game turning point. If Gondor can make a great use of this uh, Eagle Summon, he can definitely win the game after that. But what you want to do is you need to be careful. You don't want to use them randomly and fly inside the range of the of the combos. You know, that's not what you want to do. Committing on this base. Mordor is not demolishing the towers in time. Eagle Summon is available. Keep in mind, maybe he's trying to bait off the trolls. Let's uh, I, uh, say it's, uh, this is going to go down. This, he was low anyway. Elf Summon. He might go for a Visa Blast. That's going to be also his plan. Nice hit. Very smart move here from Gondor. He knows he cannot risk the biscuit. Heal is on cooldown for the worst case scenario. Uh, heal is available for the worst case scenario, sorry. Eagle summon lightning sword. But he has to cancel it. He's gonna die when he's not canceling it. He has to cancel it. Eagle can finish off this uh, Witch King now. And that's gonna be also the plan. Very well done from Gondor. This Gandalf is on point all game long. He was not losing him one single time. And trust me. This Gandalf is gonna be in the nightmares of this Mordor player. The Eagles are dying one by one. This Gandalf is quite slow. He might he might die for the first time. Use, oh, he's gonna go. He's gonna go down. Yeah, he's gonna go down. 
Uh, the second I was saying that I jinxed him, actually. That's the first time he loses his Gandalf. But look at the power points now from Mordor, guys. He's only three power points and even less than that away. You see the burst damage against the Eagles with this combos. They don't even have the full value of the leadership because Darkness and Drama Troll was only around. I was on cooldown and Witch King was dead. So Witch King has to be revived one more time. During all this time, Mordor was able to get some map control. Look at Minimap, actually. He was able to get a lot of map control for himself. Gandalf is quite expensive when it comes to revive him. But he has a statue here and a statue here, which means he is getting like a hero bonus of 10% discount. So 18 power points collected. Gondor is only at 3.5. So Gondor needs 6.5 power points for his army after that, while the Balrog is going to be unlocked with 2 power points only. And again, Balrog is able to kill the full Gondor castle. And when Gandalf is dead like that, Mordor has to make a move. Now is the time for you to shine. Now is for you to die to actually make a move to use your momentum. Don't wait for your Witch King. When, that, when Gandalf is dead, you gotta make a move. That's what I'm trying to see. And what, what you can do in a situation like that is sacrifice one of the Nazgûls for killing like two of these trebuchets or three of them if you can. And try to destroy this outpost before you go for the Balrog Summon. When you kill these units in this outpost, you will get the Balrog Summon. So you can just win the game of that, you know? The mark, uh, this is going to be replaced for a blacksmith. You have also now the siege works inside the base. He might try to build a seat, like an anti Balrog base. Gondor is able to do that. Uh, with that, I mean, like, all you got to do is get some uh, trebuchets inside the buildings like that, in the middle of the buildings around this side. And also like four or five of them around the base. You can also place them, you know, just around the wall outside. And the Balrog, when it's gonna, when it's going to be summoned, will get blown up pretty much you will see what i mean hopefully very soon even though it's very annoying for mordor but it's just like that gondor has the best defense in the entire game you know with the strong walls strong gate which you can even empower by building the stormworker making it stronger and stronger and stronger Gandalf is gonna be there very soon uh, i'm assuming sooner than the witch king now nah, witch king is gonna be there a bit sooner i believe because witch king got killed before uh, catapults are leading a bit too far away 19 power points collected. Rangers, by the way, hitting like a truck with the statue behind. They have 100% DPS. And Rangers are generally very, very good when it comes to kill monsters like trolls, drummer trolls, and the Muma kills. Since they are literally a counter unit to that, of course. And what I also like to do, and what I don't see many players doing, is like get Farami and Boromi on the field. There is no reason to not to, because if Boromi ever gets level 4, and he needs only one level for that, you will have 60% more damage leadership, which is going to make it even easier for you to kill those trolls with your rangers. Oh my goodness. Witch King is back on the field, right? Yeah, Witch King is back on the field. Gandalf is going to be there in about uh, in about 10 seconds as well. And very, very close to the Balrog summon, boys. Very, very close to the Balrog summon. But can Balrog finish this game? I think he can. I mean, he can finish the castle. Because this four trebuchets, I believe, are not going to be enough to kill him in time. We will see, though. Just fish power points now with your Nazgul. Kill some Gondonites left and right. Alvin summon. Why are, you, why are you running? Just attack them. Kill them. But oh, he's baiting him with the with the elves against the... Uh, because Gandalf is coming. So now the Nazgul has to make a move. Because if the Easterlight hits now, the Nazgul is going to be dead. Nazgul, don't fly this way. Why, why are you flying this way, bro? Oh, he's dead. He's dead. That's so bad, unfortunately, for him. Oh my goodness, really close, boys. Really close for the Balrog summon. But don't give Kondo now many more power points. And you need to summon the Balrog before the Eagles are ready. Because if you don't know, Eagles are also able to hurt the Balrog big time. So with the Eagles and the catapults inside the base, you can actually kill Balrog quite easily. Eagles having the highest DPS outside of the ultimate summons in the game, which is the Balrog and or the army of the dead. And they are also able to hurt heroes and Balrog big time. And I'm assuming the Eagle Summon is going to be ready and potentially going to be used uh, to actually, say it, kill eventually the Balrog. So with Gandalf, of course, you can kill him as well. So, But the problem is, if you cast something like a Easter Light on Balrog and he uses the Fire Web on you, he will be one-shotting you. So you need to be careful about your choice. Yeah, Balrog Summon is going to be unlocked now. Use it right here on the Gondor Knights. I think that's the best possible way. Then you can kill them because the Balrog Summon damage, when he's getting summoned, that's what I'm going to show you guys. Watch this. You see, when he's summoned like that, he's going to kill everything which is around him. He has even the uh, Numenorian Stormworker, not the Numenorian Stormworker, the uh, Keep Arches, you know, the, the fire, the laser shots from the trebuchet. Eagle Summon. Yeah, you will see this Eagle Summon now against the Balrog. It's pretty high. 
Maybe you can also send in the guns off. I would just send in the gun off at this point. Beautiful breath fire from the dude. Use use uh, one of the fire whips. You can one shot one of the eagles with your fire whip, by the way. You, you should not ignore them. When you die with Balrog against the eagles, you will give a lot of power points to your opponent. I would, why don't you use fire whip? There's low cooldown. He's gonna die now. He's gonna feed the eagle. He, look how many power points Gondor play will get after killing the Balrog. Please. Look, please, now, how many power points you will get, boys. You see, he got four full power points for killing the Balrog, all alone. He was just ignoring the Eagles, and they cannot be ignored. They have a crazy amount of DPS. Don't ignore them. And with the Balrog being dead, or killed, actually, from the Gondor, he is so close now for the Army of the Dead, and the Army of the Dead can be used to kill all these trolls, combos, catapults, everything, in no time. And that's all the Gondor player needs to do now. He was able to save the base, which is getting rebuilt now over time. He has not that much money, but it's okay. And he has also buffed the outpost under his control with three farms around here. Uh, great amount of map control. Witch King, Nazgul, they need to make something happen. But Nazgul has been taken down before. He's now going for a third Nazgul, by the way. Witch King is also a bit damaged, but it's okay. And yeah, all the Gondor player really needs to do in order to win this game at this point is just get the army of the dead unlocked to one shot those trolls. Because... Army of the Dead Boys doesn't care about your leadership bonuses. Doesn't care how much armor you have, how much leadership you have, how much, how strong you are. That doesn't matter for the Army of the Dead. They are dealing two damage to you, pretty much. Like a magic damage which cannot be nullified or blocked. So everything is going to die in no time against Army of the Dead. It's just too powerful. Okay, big commitment now. Uh, he's going to get power points here for sure. Definitely. Oh my goodness. Don't overcommit. Little bit off, man. Come on, little bit off. Look how much damage the rings are dealing, though. He has now the power... Oh, what am I doing? Yeah, he can just use the army of the dead now. Boom, that's what I'm talking about. Watch them dying now, boys. The archer range has been taken down, but that's fine. Now he knows that the majority of the army has been taken down. And the outpost is going to be even protected. Like I said, they don't care about your trolls, about how strong you are. You will still be able to one-shot every single one of them. Smart move from the Gonzo player to actually send a couple of them to the bot side. Just scouting the area and dealing even more damage to the Mordor's forest. He's, he's trying to run, but you cannot outrun with infantry units, the army of the dead. Look at the devastation. Look at the crazy amount of damage they are dealing, boys. A couple of combos were able to survive. Rohirrim summon will be used now. Gondor calls for eight, and Rohan will answer like always. And now the big man inside the... He's going to use the lightning sword. Can he hit it? Yes, he's hit, able to hit it. Be careful, I see you, but Gandalf is on point. He lost him only one single time throughout the entire game. Oh, and the Witch King has been taken down. The Troll stopped chasing him, by the way. Gandalf is now... No Star Grace! And Gandalf, guys, let me know in the comment section down below what do you think about the Gandalf's performance in his legendary game against Mordor. On a beautiful map for Surface. And this guy is on point. Like, making the best of his wizard. And getting him even level 10 in a 1v1 match, which is quite impressive. Juicy war of power there to kill the combos. Mordor is down a lot. He has, what, one single settlement outside? And the problem with the Lumber Mills is they also fall off in long terms. You see, there are no more trees nearby. So the Lumber Mill workers, they need to walk, like, to the bottom right side to be able to collect money, you know? At this stage of the game, when you are playing evil factions like Mordor and Isengard, the best thing you should, you know, you need to do is just demolish the Lumber Mill and replace it with a slaughterhouse. Because this is pointless, you know? When you have no more trees nearby, just don't... Uh, try to keep it around. So the pressure is real. The Balrog summon is going to be available. But what's the matter? The problem is, even if you use Balrog, and even if you are able to destroy the castle, um, that doesn't mean anything, because Gondor will not be defeated, since he has two outposts. And with this much map control outside, he will be able to buy the fortress back in no time. So we are getting more trolls. Um, basically... If nothing crazy happens, the game will be decided, in my opinion, with the uh, with the next Army of the Dead summon. So, if Mordor doesn't make anything happen, Army of the Dead is going to win the game. The next one. While Balrog can't win the game. That's not possible. Balrog is only able to win the game when there is only one single settlement, one single outpost, slash, camp, or castle remaining on the field. Other than that, other than that Balrog is not able to win the game. In a situation like that, Army of the Dead is able to win the game, though. So, Witch King has to be revived, Nazgul has to be revived. Um, Farami is on the field as the Knight of Gondor. He's level 4. Level 5 is going to unlock his own leadership. By the way, few people know, but it also gives you fear resistant. 
which is not a big feel, big thing in battle for middle of one sadly because there is so much potential for you to nullify enemies fears like from screech or from horn of gondo especially from horn of gondo which is absolutely a joke <laughs> because by the time you get bottom you're to level five everybody is level two and level two nullifies the fear effect easy peasy lemon squeezy The demon from the ancient world. For the second time, Eagle Summon can be used once again to deal with him though. Is he gonna do that? He's gonna do that indeed. Eagles are coming, as Peregrine Tuku would like to see. The Citadel is gonna be taken down. The reason why he has, he has to hit it twice is because he's making a mistake. You need to fly on top of the Citadel and use Ignite as you're flying. This way you're uh, flying, the Vinx is gonna deal some damage. Because you can be ignited the second you land, and that's gonna cause you to only one to only need one hit to destroy the citadel guys so of course that's gonna be the same situation like before the, the eagles are just taking care of this baldrock in no time since he's for whatever reason refusing to use his uh, seeds the fire whip against the eagles just use it fire whip has a low cooldown you can use it multiple times by the way all right the outpost is gonna be taken down though but it's fine for Gondor. He was able to save the castle once again. That's all that matters. The eagles are still remaining on the field. They can now come here and eventually kill those trolls. Cloudbreak has been used. Cloudbreak slows down the enemy trolls and also reduces their armor. Boss Starcrest, but he might die now. Yeah, he's dead. That's what I'm trying to say. You see, like, uh, see it. Like, the war of power against trolls is not as effective as you might think. But I'm assuming the plan for him, for him was actually to kill the combos. This way the eagles can clean up, but... It was kind of miscalculated because the Eagles were almost Gunners. So he was kind of sacrificing his Gandalf for no reason. And Gandalf, reviving Gandalf level 10 is actually quite cost, uh, quite expensive too. You need to invest 3,000 for that. Which is a lot. And Gondor is actually kind of behind. What is going on in this game? Does he have units on the field? He has a couple of Gondor Knights, but without Gandalf being around, they can't achieve too much. And here is why. Even if he uses now the army of the dead and actually kills the trolls, the combos, the catapults, he cannot achieve too much with the Gondor Knights. Why? Because the Mordor player has Nazgûls on the field, and Nazgûls can't be attacked from the army of the dead unless you attack them. By the way, if you attack, don't be that fool. Try not to attack the army of the dead with your Nazgûls. If you do that, you will receive tons of damage and you will eventually die. So basically, the, you know, he has three flying heroes, like the two Nazgûls and the Witch King. They can clean those Gondor Knights in no time, you know? Mordor is able to recover a lot. I'm, maybe I was kind of too early to see that, but... The Farami is looking for a chance to use the army of the dead. But keep in mind, guys, that that's very important. Um, Gondor is the best summons in the lead game. Like, you can summon a full army from your power points all alone. You know what I'm saying? You can summon the Rohan allies, the Alvin allies, the Eagles, and the army of the dead. Like, this three, for example, are enough to deal so much damage. To the fortress, to the bees, to the to the units, to everything. Warning arrow deals massive damage to the Nazgul. Never use it on the Witch King. Witch King is so resistant against the warning arrow. And uh, Mordor is trying to recover, but he needs to know that army of the dead is back up, you know? Gandalf is getting revived slowly but surely. Let's see if Gandalf actually can make something happen. Balrog summon is gonna be not available until Gandalf is there. Oh, Morning Arrow, and Nazgul is going to be taken down. No! Oh my goodness. The Faramir is gone. <laughs> Faramir was trying desperately to show his quality. But Gondor has actually lost a lot. Uh, like, he's doomed now, right? No, he's not. I was... This outpost is still remaining under his control. Just get orcs on the field. Pump out orcs, guys. Mordor. He has enough command points to do that. Orcs, they are kind of, you know... They are not very strong, but you can just spawn them for free all the time. And also, Mordor needs Scavenger. When you have this many power points, why don't you use it? Like, you can get Scavenger and Call the Horde at the same time from your spellbook. Build two Orc Pits, spam the entire map with Orcs, and take down every single farm from the Gondor, and deny him the money he's getting for, for free. Like, he has so many farms outside for no reason. Darkness is almost back up, Balrog is almost back up. Actually, Balrog is gonna be there before Gandalf joins the battlefield. That's huge, because this way, uh, Gandalf is never gonna be able to enter the battlefield anymore. Even though... I'm assuming, and that's my prediction, he's gonna potentially use the army of the dead to kill Balrog a bit faster. But Balrog has still the time and the chance to destroy the, the citadel at least. That's gonna delay, of course, Gandalf in long terms. 
So you need to use it the second you have the chance. But I miss back, but yeah. Use Balrog now. Use Balrog now. You don't want to wait until Gandalf is back on the menu. Trust me on that one. You don't want to do that. So Gondor's money is also not looking that great. Eagle Simon at the same time with the Balrog. Eagle has the same cooldown like the Balrog Simon. Balrog Simon will be used now. He will be forced to use Army of the Dead if he wants to get his Gandalf on the field. Yeah, he's using the Army of the Dead. Smart, but he can... Yeah, you see when you land on it, you see? Kill the Zitter. Huge, huge. The Balrog is gone, but that's, that's worth it. That's worth it. Guys, why is this worth it, you're asking? Glad you're asking. I will answer your question. Not only he was able to kill the Citadel, which is gonna delay the Gandalf, of course, no, but he was also beating his opponent to use army after that and Eagle Summon defensively. Like that's that's a massive thing. Now the Eagles are coming, but what they can what can they do? Nazgûls can always just fly away. By the way, also Eagles are much much stronger than Nazgûls, so you don't wanna fight that. They can even kill the Witch King in no time. Oh? Witch King, don't die. He was using heal, by the way, on the, on the, on the Eagles. Did you see that? The Witch King is going to be taken down. Holy moly, man. What the heck is going on? The Nazgul power, uh, the, the Eagle power. Do you see that? Eagles for the win. Cloud Break is going to be used. All the, eagle, the two Eagles against three Nazguls. And it includes the Witch King. And Witch King is dying just like that to the Eagles. Eagles are just so powerful, guys. It's, they are busted. They are busted. That's what it is. Every one of them has to be revived. Luckily for Mordor, they are for free. The outpost is still remaining on the field. He has to now revive his Gandalf once again. And again, 3,000 has to be invested for that. But he was able to save the castle. He only lost the Citadel. And he has still, like, decent amount of farms outside. He can even get more now, since all the Nazgûls are dead. And that means Mordor is not able uh, to, to kind of contest, you know? Look how many Gondonites he has on the field. Split them. You don't need to be at the same point like that. The outpost is going to be eventually taken down right after. What a, what a disaster game is that, actually. Mistakes over mistakes. What is what are those trolls doing? And you can see, like the longer the game goes on, the more mistakes people are gonna make. Uh, because they are kinda losing their patience, they are kinda being impatient, they are trying to just finish off the game, and that's gonna lead you to more and more mistakes. And mistakes are cool. I like them because they are turning any game to a more fiesta, clown fiesta, entertaining game at the same time. You know what I'm saying? And I like this matchup a lot, you know, Gondor, Mordor. Uh, on the map for Eisen because just like in the films and Mordor is making a move now but he has only one single troll is this going is this going to be enough to keep this combos protected Gandalf still needs a long time Gandalf has a really long revive time by the way guys so keep that please in mind so try to not lose him especially not when he's level 10 the outpost is going down slowly but surely that's good for um, uh, he was actually able to destroy the outpost once again at the bottom left side the Nazgûls they need to be joining the battlefield very soon and Mordor also has to make a move. He has trebuchets on top of the wall and one inside the base. So it's going to be hard for Mordor to commit on that. But keep in mind, please, that Drama Troll is making your catapults also tankier and makes them also deal more damage. Now, everything is from unlocked from the spellbook, but Mordor is refusing, for whatever reason, to pick the Scavenger and the Call the Horde from the PowerPoint spellbook. For whatever reason, I don't get it. Parami is receiving some damage. On the cost for 8, Rohan will answer. Smart move from the Rohirrim to target the catapults. And once catapults are dead, uh, Gondor Knights can actually go inside the genes. Also, the only troll he had on the field is gone. Now, Gondor Knights can actually kill those orc combos in no time. The thing with the Drama Troll, if you don't know, is when you attack with the Drama Troll, you will not be able to give leadership anymore. So make sure to not attack him with him anytime in any match. Yeah. If, imagine if he would go for a scavenger like 10 minutes ago, you know? Scavenger would give you so much more money and value. And during all this time, Topside has been recaptured by Gondor. Gondor Knights are fighting for the map control. They are even fighting against a troll in a 1v3 match. And surrounded. Troll is going to be taken down. 19 power points collected. Doesn't really matter anything though because he not, he's not using them. I mean, the only... The only things which are not unlocked yet are Scavenger and Call the Horde. So basically what you can do is you can build two Orc Pits, get some Orcs in the queue and just press uh, Shift Orc so you can build multiple Orcs at the same time and you use the Call the Horde to get full command points with Orcs and just be annoying. Just send Orcs everywhere to keep the, you know, to keep the opponent busy. But because now it's going to be a different story, why? 
Because even oh, Balrog, yeah, Gandalf is on the field. That's why Gandalf is already here, boys. Witch King is also here, but yeah, that's not the films, my friend. That's not the extended edition, which was kind of disappointment for me. I don't, I don't think, <clears throat> by the way, that any time in any world there is a chance for the Witch King to kill Gandalf the White. Never, dude. Gandalf the Grey was able to defeat Balrog, who is a Maya, by the way. The same class like Saruman, Sauron. And uh, Gandalf himself. Who is Witch King? He's a servant from a Maya. And again, Gandalf was able to kill the Balrog when he was grey. Imagine Gandalf the White. He would have smoked Balrog in no time. Not not even close, baby, you know? Um, Balrog summon is available. But again, the second you will be using that. Uh, now, I believe now Gondor needs to try to not use the army of the dead for that. I think that, look, he was even able to break the gate. <laughs> the area damage. Look at this logo when Balrog is summoned. The smoke on the ground. Ah, that's that's a mistake. Like, this is like a loop, guys. Are we in the loop now? I mean, when you use army after that every time defensively, defensively like that, you cannot win as Gondor as well. So let's skip a little bit forward. I want to actually see what's going on. Because this is like a loop. And Gondor is making the mistake. Just summon the eagles and try to use the army after that for the push. Because now when your army after that is on cooldown... And your eagle is on cooldown. What can you do? How can you get inside the you know mortal base? But look at the minimap in the meantime, guys. Condor has full map control. Like Mordor has only one single mill, level three with no workers. There is only one guy cutting the wood all the time for no reason. And the wood this is like the best wood in the in the game or in the world because it's never done. You know, it's always do 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 do. Condor calls for it. The eagles are gonna be gone. Big commitment. Where is Gandalf? Did Gandalf die actually? Did I miss it? Let me check. No, Gandalf is alive. But I don't know where Gandalf is. I'm blind in this case. Ah, ooh, ah, claw break. Um, yeah, the, the Witch King is actually killing his own catapults, but it's fine. Nazgul is on the hand. Gandalf is here. I think he was healing up over time. It's okay. Map control is everything, guys. Gondor is getting so much money and value. Marketplace, you don't... By the way, marketplace is one of the buildings you need to you need to have it in your base to be able to maintain the buffs you are able to purchasing from it. So if you lose the marketplace, make sure to rebuy it, and never demolish it. That's not like a stone worker or any other building which you can purchase everything and demolish afterwards. That's not possible with the marketplace. Protect these lands. So let me skip a bit forward because I believe we are in, in a loop, <laughs> and until something else happens, but. Oh my goodness, okay. Gandalf is the Nazgul and Witch King Slayer. He killed so many Nazguls and Witch Kings this game, that's unbelievable. Did Mordor finally pick the Scavenger? Yes, he did. Finally, dude. Finally. We released him. Oh, what a power has been used to kill the Orc army. Gandalf is getting in safety. Balrog summon is going to be available and again. Okay, we're going to see the same situation again. Yeah, there we go. Is he going to do the same? Don't do the same again. Oh, nice. Smart move finally from Gondor. Just let them kill your town, uh, your, see it, your castle. Who cares? You have, to, you have an outpost at the bottom left side. Just finish off his castle with the army of the dead. That's the best call. Eagle Simon will be do will be still used for defense. What is this Balrog doing, though? He was, he's, uh, he's not going to be able to do anything. Look how many catapults. Bam, 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 bam. On your face, man. But look at this Gondor boys. Like Rohirrim Simon. Many, many Gondor Knights, Alvin summon, Eagle summon for the defense, and everything else for the offense. And the base from Mordor is falling apart. That's not replaceable. And Mordor is not going to be able to kill this base, by the way, because Eagles are doing a phenomenal job defending it. Very well done. And that's the call he should be making like a long time ago. Never use army after that. When you have, like, uh, I mean, not. I'm not saying never. Unicorn has been defeated, by the way, and Gondor is victorious. I'm not saying never. But when you have an outpost and you have enough money to, in the worst case scenario, be able to buy the castle back, you need to use your army after that, which is the only possible way for you to deal with the troll army and to kill the combos and go inside the castle of your opponent offensively. Don't use it defensively. Because you, couldn't, you can see that eagles are all alone able to kill uh, the Balrog, you know? Because Mordor player was making the mistake to never using, say it, uh, the fire whip against the eagles. That's a mistake. Just use it. The fire is able to one-shot them. But he was desperately trying to finish off the castle. 
and ignoring the Eagles. And I hope that he learned after this game that ignoring the Eagles is not going to work out. They are having too much DPS to be ignored. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for more content like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, as always, keep hitting like a truck and also stay beyond standards. Peace out.